Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review Meadows Misfires Former FLA Deputy Chair dials back Twitter wrath, Tommy to slams remarks as distraction. One of the island's most respected gender specialists is calling on the country's men to resist the urge to use demeaning or derogative terms to refer to women. Dr. Opal Parma Addison was responding to comments made on social media by former Deputy Chairman of the Firearm Licensing Authority FLA, Dennis Meadows, who seemingly characterized former PNP's youth organization president Crystal Tomlinson as hashtag babymother13 in a Twitter board on Thursday evening. Tomlinson is the mother of dancehall artist Beanie Man's 13 child. We need to be clear that women's body and what they do with their body is their responsibilities, Palmer Adessa stated. They feel they can tell women what to wear or what kind of action they should take with men. And that's really wrong. We need to understand that the historical context of that is as a result of patriotic thinking that women are to be led and defined, she said. She argued that this was a demonstration of inequality and prejudice. And so, for someone in an argument to use that as what they might consider a valid argument to dismiss a woman's need to understand that there is action, in fact, discriminatory, said Palmer Addison. Meadows' constant post was in response to Tomlinson's criticism of an interview on Nationwide Network. Commenting on the interview, Tomlinson said that Meadows was struggling to sound honest when questioned about accusations made by FLA CEO Shane Dolan about the former deputy chair's conduct as the FLA director. Like you struggled to remain hashtag babymother13 but failed miserably, my effort was not to convince the likes of you. It's a futile effort to convince those fix on finding a reason not to believe you, Meadows responded. The backlash was quick, with many Twitter followers saying Meadows as disrespectful and going much too far. Dennis, my vagina and reproductive choices aren't your business. The FLA was your business. Being diligent, fair and accountable in executing your duty was your business, Tomlinson replied. When reporters contacted Meadows, he said that those who knew him well could confirm by nature he is civil and well-mannered. I respect man, woman and child, but those who dare to question my character or seek to impugn my good name will feel my wrath. I am only human I am not pretentious, he reported. Hours later, he bought a public pressure and apologized for his tweet. On reflection, it's undeserving and unbecoming. It's an affront to women's reproductive rights and choice. Given the circumstances, I'm not in the right state of mind, he tweeted 16 hours after the initial post, adding that he was unreservedly apologizing to Tomlinson and the motherhood. Speaking with reporters, Tomlinson a junior solar minister on gender issues for the opposition PNP said the country should not allow Meadows to use sexist remarks and aggression to distract from the matter. The allegations made by Shane Dolan against him are damning, damaging, and should cause every Jamaican to be awaiting a credible response from him, she said. Efforts to get a further comment from Tamlin's following the apology proved futile. Four-year-old dies after being left in car at Wellington Town Basic School. A four-year-old boy died on Thursday after being left in a locked car for several hours outside a basic school in Wellington Town, St. Andrew. The Constable Communication Unit confirmed the incident. It is similar to the case that happened a month ago, but we have not prepared an official report yet, as it is still under investigation, our representatives of the CCU reported. Reports are that the tragedy unfolded after the boy and other children were transported to the school by a teacher about 9 a.m. on Thursday. The other children exited the vehicle, but the boy was not removed from the car. Hours later, the teacher discovered that the child was still in the car. The boy was taken to the Bustamante Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. This is the second such incident in just over a month. In January, 18-month-year-old Shalini Dobson died after being left in the car for eight hours. No one has been charged in relation to the death, which reportedly involved a police officer. Governor-General Taken to Hospital Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen has been admitted to hospital, reporters understand. 
Allen was taken to the University Hospital of the West Indies on Sunday night for observation. When contacted, a representative of King's House told reporters that they could neither confirm nor deny the report, but that a press release would be released in short order. Allen, 71, has been Governor General since 2009. Child dies after being hit by a car in St. James. A child has died after being struck by a motor vehicle along the Lilliput Main Road in St. James on Monday morning. He has been identified as 12-year-old Jeff Fitzgerald, a student of Spot Valley High and resident of Lilliput. The child was on his way to school when he was struck by a Nissan AD wagon that operates as a public passenger vehicle along the stretch of roadway. Reports coming forward are that the child was attempting to cross the road when he was hit by the oncoming vehicle. He landed several feet from the spot of impact. Tommy Lee Sprouter hospitalized after altercation in prison. Dancehall artist Tommy Lee Sprouter was reportedly injured during an altercation with correctional officers at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center in downtown Kingston yesterday morning. He has since been taken to the hospital for treatment. His attorney, Donahue Martin, reported that he has not yet been able to see his client but will be monitoring the situation. When I attempted to see Tommy Lee's brother at the prison, I literally saw the ambulance driving out with him, he said. Various eyewitness reports confirm that Tommy Lee's brother, whose real name is Leroy Russell, was taken on a stretcher to the medical facility at the prison for a treatment before he was transferred to the Kingston Public Hospital. Calls to the communication department of the Department of Correctional Services were not immediately returned. However, reports are that the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center is reportedly tense after the incident. Tommy Lee's brother has been incarcerated for over a year after he pleaded guilty to illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition in March 2021. He was sentenced to three years in prison. The entertainer was arrested in December 2020 after he was found with the illegal firearm along Woodburn Road in New Kingston. A controversial figure, Tommy Lee Sprouter, is known for the singles Sprouter, Blessings, Under Vibes, Sprouton Soldier, Rich Badness, Sprouton Angel, and Protocol with Gang. Jamaican cop and scamming rap also accused of transporting cocaine in vagina and stomach. Jamaican policewoman Shalene Allen was officially indicted on Tuesday by assault Florida grand jury with importing cocaine into the United States with the intent to distribute the illegal substance, some of which were allegedly found in her vagina and stomach. The indictment charges Allen with importation of 500 grams or more of cocaine and possession with intent to distribute 500 grams or more of cocaine. If convicted, she faces up to 40 years in prison on each count. Allen was suspended from the Jamaica Constabulary Force following her arrest earlier this month in Florida in connection to the lottery scamming and drug trafficking offenses. A release from the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida on Tuesday stated that the 42-year-old Jamaican was arrested on February 3rd. At that time, she arrived at Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International Airport on a flight from Montego Bay, Jamaica. An inspection by U.S. Customs and Border Protection revealed as Allen had a package of cocaine inside her vagina and a package of cocaine inside each of her bra cups, the release stated. Further, Allen also had 90 pellets of packaged cocaine inside her stomach, which she had swallowed. The Jamaican law enforcers was reportedly transported to a hospital where she expelled the 90 pellets. In total, Allen had approximately 1,350 grams of cocaine on or inside her body when she entered the United States, about 234 grams in her vagina, about 174 grams in her bra, and about 942 grams inside her stomach, disclosed the U.S. Attorney's Office. At the same time, the office reminded that an indictment merely contains allegations and a defendant is presumed innocent unless or until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. Allen, who resides in Stonebrook Vista, Trelawney, is an 18-year-old veteran of the JCF. Media reports from the United States earlier this month said she had also been charged with wire fraud and mail fraud. Local and federal agencies, including Homeland Security and the U.S. Portal Inspection Service, which have been conducting investigations, 
believe Allen is the head of a lottery scamming organization. The authorities believe the organization has several bases operating in the United States and Jamaica. A review of numerous accounts tied to this organization revealed a loss in the amount of an excess of $1.69 million from 17 victims across the country, the news report stated, citing new escorts documents. House Speaker co-accused freed of illegal dumping charges. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Marissa darwin Filbert and her two co-accused have been freed of charges of illegal dumping in breach of the National Solid Waste Management Act. The judge, Lerona Montague-Williams, said she could not find the trio guilty because they did not leave the garbage at the site where they disposed of it. Section 46.1 of the Act that the three were accused of breaching reads, a person commits an offence if he chose, drops or otherwise disposed, and leaves any litter in a public place. The defendants, along with Dalrin Filbert in the St. Anne Parish Court, were her son, Giovanni Filbert, and Simon Sanchez, who is said to be her employee. The court heard that police were patrolling along the Salem Maid Road shortly before noon on August 15, 2021, when they observed three people exiting a Toyota Highest motor truck and started disposing of garbage, which included cardboard boxes. The police officers approached the trio and told them that they had disposed of the garbage in an area not designated as a dump site. It is alleged that Darwin Filbert scoffed at the officers, asking, You know who I am? She reportedly went on to tell the lawmen that she is a lawyer, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Member of Parliament for Trelawney South. The court heard that the police instructed the three to reload the garbage on the truck and they complied. Fiery protests in Tavern as residents accuse soldiers of abuse. Disgruntled residents of Tavern in St. Andrew took to the streets on Monday to protest what they described as ill treatment at the hands of members of the Jamaica Defense Force JDF. Residents mounted roadblocks and set fire to all cars as they voiced their displeasure at the way soldiers handled members of the community at a gathering over the weekend. According to information, residents were present at an event in the community on Sunday night when soldiers turned up to end the gathering. They shared that instead of issuing warning that the court should disperse, JDF soldiers proceeded to destroy liquor and other valuables. Last night, I'm a birthday, I may have a get together and the soldier them just come out, no warning, no police in sight, to lock off the music and a delf curfew a few times yet and kick over the whole of my consignment liquor them. I try me, I try, because me have two youth I try send back to school and thing and cho the COVID thing work kinda hard, said the alleged event promoter. Me is not a troublemaker in the community because everybody know me. Me a good youth in the community. Them send me a go all shop for them and me demand them look and kick over my bottle of rum, Hennessy, how much drug on, totally madness, that are no governance, he continued. Me kind of vex right now. Them left me in a dip because me have to pay back for the people them consignment liquor. Inspector Harvey Francis of the Papin Police Station said law enforcers are now on the ground of the community as they try to cause crowding tempers among citizens. Residents are demonstrating about an incident that occurred between 9.30 and 10.30 p.m. Sunday night where they said soldiers damaged some liquors and fired shots in the air. They are saying they are not pleased with how the soldiers are dealing with them, he shared. They have lit all cars and debris in the road, and with the police want to see how much we can quell the situation. I spoke with the residents, and they have agreed to remove blockages pending investigations. I told them I would be speaking with them periodically and to inform them of what is happening on the ground. Inspector Francis said maintaining good relations between law enforcers and members of the community was a top priority for him and his officers and urged members of the military to do the same. There are allegations of members of the military speaking to the members of the community in a particular way and even members of the police force. What I will do is speak to my men as to how to deal with citizens. The soldiers have to do their part, he shared. We want to have a good relationship with the citizens because for the main part, they are cooperative and we want to maintain that. In the meantime, People's National Party Council for the Papi Division, Venetia Phillips, said she had raised the issue with the JDF hierarchy and a probe into the matter is underway. Police Federation accepts government's wage offer. 
Reporters understand that the Jamaica Police Federation has accepted the government's latest wage offer ending months of tough negotiations. The members anonymously vote to accept the offer following consultations. They had previously rejected a 4% wage increase offer, which they had dismissed as an insult. Under the latest wage offer, according to sources, constables who are at the lowest rank of the police hierarchy would take home at least $210,000, with greater portion being untaxed. One high-ranking member of the police federation had urged the rank and file members of the constabulary to seriously consider the new wage deal as the amount of money offered is available in this financial year and will not be brought forward to the next. I am in no way saying this package is good. I am saying that under the circumstances, we can approve it. Cap this amount in our March salary and let us move forward April beyond the members expressed. Drive-by shooting in Portland leaves man dead another injured. A motive is just to be identified in Wednesday's drive-by shooting in Buffy, Portland, which resulted in the death of one man and the wounding of another. Dead is 36-year-old Ricardo Everett of Woodstock Housing Scheme in Buff Bay. Reports are that shortly after 9 p.m. Wednesday, several men were standing on the roadway in the area when a car drove up with armed men who opened gunfire at the group. The vehicle then sped off. Everett was later found suffering from gunshot wounds while another man was shot in the leg. Both men were assisted to the hospital where Everett was pronounced dead and the other man admitted. Investigations are ongoing. Five boys remanded in killing of St. Elizabeth man. The five St. Elizabeth boys implicated in the killing of a 62-year-old were remanded when they appeared in the St. Elizabeth Parish Court on Thursday. The parents of the boys, whose ages range from 10 to 17, were also in court. The suspects were initially taken into police custody following the killing of Delroy Waters at their home earlier this week. Reporters understand that the boys had not been charged with murder. The boys are to reappear in court on March 1. Biker dies in St. Anne Crash 26-year-old Akeem Brown, otherwise called Jungle, of Orange Town in St. Anne died as a result of injuries he sustained in a motorcycle accident on the Langdover Main Road in the parish on Thursday. Reports from the St. Anne's Bay Police are that about 3.50 a.m., Brown was traveling with a pilot on his motorcycle when on reaching a section of the roadway, he allegedly lost control of the vehicle and ran off the road. The police were summoned and Brown and the pilot were transported to hospital where Brown succumbed to his injuries. The passenger, a female, is admitted in stable condition. The police have advised that investigations are ongoing. Out of control, molasses drug causes four vehicle crash on Spur Tree Hill. The occupants of three vehicles narrowly escaped serious injury after a truck transporting molasses crashed on the accident-prone Spur Tree Hill on Thursday. Police reports are that about 5 p.m., the driver of the truck lost control of the unit while traveling uphill, causing it to go backwards. The out-of-control truck collided with three vehicles. There were no reports of serious injuries. The Spur Tree Hill main road links Mandeville and its environment to St. Elizabeth and Points West. Heavily laden, slow-moving trucks often hinder traffic on this steep, difficult hill, and there have been a number of tragic accidents involving trucks down the years. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.